Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. There is nothing more dangerous than a weak man who obtains power. In this important moment, maybe the most important since 19, 1945, and certainly in most of our lifetimes, who thinks Canadians shouldn't have a say? Welcome back to my series of Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, A Woman's Perspective. Children, as they're growing, need the opportunity to test the boundaries of their world. Small bits at first, then moving into larger and larger challenges. Now, a lot of those challenges include some bumps and bruises and a lot of blood, sweat and tears. But the only way that true self-confidence can be developed is not being told that you're fantastic and amazing all the time. It comes from that feeling that you get and you get to own that you overcame an obstacle that was presented in your life. I do understand the deep-seated feminine need to make sure that your kids never cry, to never be hurt, never be harmed. But I do also understand the need for that child to explore their world, try dangerous things, and to overcome things on their own. If you as a parent are always clearing the way, bubble wrapping and cushioning life for them, they never learn those small, insignificant failures when they're young and overcoming them for later in life when the big failures come, they already have the tools developed to be able to deal with it. When my son was very young, about six or seven, he decided that he wanted to take up skateboarding. And this was in the 90s, so of course skateboarding was all the rage, all the kids were doing it. So, as a good mom, got him a skateboard for Christmas. Now, when I saw the things that he wanted to do on this skateboard, my heart skipped a beat. He would be flinging himself off of 10 foot edges into concrete bowls, riding a block of wood with wheels attached to it. That there's nothing more terrifying as a, as a mother to witness your child throwing themselves into harm's way. However, he started out very small, of course, because he was just learning. First learning how to do ollies, first learning how to do, you know, just ride the thing. Eventually it came to the point where he was riding rails, he was kick flipping off of things into concrete pools. And I cannot lie, every single time my child flung himself off of an embankment, it terrified me. But I understood his need to test his physical boundaries in this world and fail hundreds of times before he was able to land that perfect trick. And the reward for me as a mother was the immense joy that he got when he did accomplish his goal. I understand that that sense of accomplishment, that self-esteem and that confidence is something that I personally could never have instilled in him. No matter what I said to him, no matter how fantastic I thought he was, no matter what I told him, because it was something that he accomplished, overcame himself with the bumps and bruises and broken bones, more stories about that later, but his self-worth came from his own overcoming obstacles and accomplishments. That sense of accomplishment that my son had is more beneficial to him as a man now than anything comfortable or soft that I could have provided for him to build who he is today. Now that's not to mention the time that I get a phone call at 11.58 at night on March the 31st when I was at work that he had fallen at Millennium Park and he, think he thinks he did something to his ankle and I thought maybe it's an April Fool's because you know it's almost April the 1st and he broke down crying and said no mom this isn't a joke 
I need you to come get me. Um, I arrived at the skate park. His foot was, was sideways on his leg. His leg was straight, but his foot was sideways. I nearly hear, hurled. I, yeah, I, I'm thinking about it now is making me feel a little. But um, the ambulance was already there. The firemen were already there taking care of him. He had destroyed his ankle and broken his, his lower leg um, trying to do a trick that he, I guess it was the first time he was trying to, I don't even want, won't even tell you what trick it was. It was some crazy thing dropping in off of a whoop de doo down into a dippy thing. Anyway, he destroyed his ankle. And as a mother, I was furious that he had done something so dangerous that he had risked his health. Well, fast forward a few years and a surgery or two later, he's still skateboarding and it's one of the greatest joys he has in his life. And he skates in competitions. He um, enjoys flinging himself off of things. He's in his mid-20s right now, so he is getting a little older. But that freedom that he's found in that hobby that he loves is greater than anything that I could have given him other than giving him the freedom to explore and to shatter his ankle. So here's a question. What benefit would I have given him as a mother to be there every single time my son went skateboarding, be there every time in the sidelines yelling, be careful, make sure you have your helmet on. Oh, don't do that, that's too dangerous. I would have hum humiliated him and turned him into this little, scared, insignificant man. And that's not what I wanted for my son. I wanted my son to be a proud, strong, competent man who is able to deal with failures. The bigger failures that come along in life than just falling down on your skateboard. Now, I did insist that he did wear a helmet, and I don't think he did it 100% of the time, but... Just take care of your brain. Take care of your brain. That's who you are. That's what I kept telling him. And if he's watching this right now, wear your helmet, please, for the love of God. So my number one piece of parenting advice, let your kids fail. Let them fall down. Let them bump their head. Let them accomplish overcoming something. The worst thing I watch parents do is rush in and solve a problem for a child that they're fully capable of solving themselves. A puzzle that they get frustrated with. Um, a video game that they just can't quite get past that level. Um, bubble wrapping them and making them terrified of the world. You're raising weak, dependent, just whiny humans. And we see that in today's world. Entitled people that the most minor inconvenience that they go through in life is an earth shattering thing that happens to them. And it, it actually destroys them. Raise anti-fragile children, please. Number two parenting advice on this subject, socialize your kids early um, and don't get in the way of them figuring out their own conflicts. Sure, if it becomes physical, as a mother, you want to separate them, let them cool down and have them talk later. That's just my perspective as, as a mom, as a woman. Um, I come at it from a feminine place. I don't like to see violence. But if you don't let your kids solve those minor squabbles amongst themselves, they will never learn how to solve bigger conflicts in life if they always have someone rushing in to fix it for them. If you deny your children failure, you are denying them their full potential as a human for your comfort because it's uncomfortable to watch your kid fail and it's uncomfortable to watch them fling themselves off of concrete barricades. But that's your comfort. It doesn't benefit them in the long run. So we now live in a world of soft people, entitled people that have never failed. They've never ever had the opportunity to pull themselves up 
and have to solve their own problems. And the world now is lacking in good, strong men and women who can take failure in stride. Now that's not to say failure isn't devastating. Hell, it's devastating. I have failed a million times and thought each time it was the end of the world. But after I got over it, pulled myself up and figured out how I was gonna get through it, I got through it. And now I can look back on honestly how much of an idiot I was for getting myself in those circumstances in the first place. But I know what not to do next time. And I'm proud of the failures that I've experienced. They've made me become who I am today. So how do you strengthen yourself and keep strengthening yourself against the failures of life as you grow older? You continuously put yourself in a situation where there is a possibility of failure. And sometimes you fail and that's okay. It's how you get back up and how you recover from that failure. There's the great saying, people don't remember how you fell down, they remember how you got back up. Get yourself out of your box, get yourself out of your comfort zone. Talk to people who you wouldn't normally talk to. Explore other ideas, explore other ideologies. Listen to both sides, listen to everybody. We're in a moment in time right now where we are segregating ourselves into camps and not talking at all with each other, demonizing each other, othering each other. That's not right. We need both sides in order to go forward together. There's no such thing as a 100% safe place because there's life out there. We've grown up in such a soft, warm, tender and loving society right now that we've forgotten the dangers that actually do exist in the world and will always exist in the world. Challenging yourself will get you somewhere. Being safe gets you nowhere. Thank you so much for joining me today, listening to my ramblings about Rule 11 from Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life. If you like what I'm saying here, consider subscribing so you can hear more of my ramblings. I do have rules one through 10 posted in the, uh, the playlist there for you if you wanna go through. And I would like to know in the comments below what obstacles you've overcome in your life that have given you that incredible sense of accomplishment, that failure that you overcame and got back up from. It's inspiring to hear people's stories of accomplishment. And I love hearing stories of people's growth and change. And it inspires me to even push myself further. So do share. All right, one rule to go. See you in the next one.